Welcome to the Spunky Spirit Podcast. I'm your host, psychic medium, Carrie Muggs. This is where we learn all things spirit, everything from spiritual gifts, awakenings, ghosts, aliens, and starseeds. Nothing is untouchable, but always fun and spunky. I am honored to be on this spiritual journey with you, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Hello and welcome to the Spunky Spirit Podcast. I am Psychic Medium Carrie Muggs, and now we are trying the podcast on video. So you can still listen to this on audio on Spotify or Apple or any of those places, but now you can actually watch it on YouTube. So it's going to be fun and it's kind of a learning in progress. So just know and bear with me that we might change cameras, we might change microphones, but right now this is kind of a, this is what we're doing. So here we go. This weekend, if you follow me on Instagram, which would be awesome if you did, you saw that I went to Phenomicon in Vernal, Utah, and it was amazing. Now, for those of you who do follow me know that I do love Skinwalker Ranch because it kind of gave me an epiphany. So let me start by saying a lot of people are like, why do you do things like that? Why do you or why are you interested in things like that? Why are you asking for things like that? And I just want to say, if you know anything about me, I love knowledge. I love to learn. And I love being a psychic medium and I love my readings and my readings are very protected. And I've never had a bad experience during one of my readings. I've never had a lower frequency. I've always, that was kind of my deal with spirit is that I would always be protected when I did my readings. But outside of my readings and when I was younger and sometimes even now, I do have other experiences, not during the readings that I have wondered why they've happened or what they are, or I've been really interested in trying to see what they are. And so I love to learn about this stuff. And I also, too, if I'm doing this as my my profession, I want to know what I'm getting into. I want to know that if I do, do do a reading and, um, my client is having issues with something, I know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be one of those mediums that goes in and doesn't know what they're doing and opens different portals or opens things that they're not supposed to. That's, I don't want to do that. So I think that knowledge is power and I always, always want to learn. And also another thing that got me interested in the paranormal is watching um, Skinwalker Ranch. I started to watch it. At first I thought it was about skinwalkers and it kind of does, it does not about skinwalkers. It's about aliens. And there's a lot of alien sightings around Vernal, Utah. But there is a little bit of touch of Skinwalker in it. It's there's supposed to be a curse on the land or the mesa that's on Skinwalker Ranch. And they say it was cursed by Skinwalkers. But that plays a little part into it, but not very much at all. It's mostly about them communicating with something that is has intelligence, something that's on the ranch that has intelligence, whether it be paranormal or a Bigfoot or um artificial intelligence or an a, a U, UAP. They, they call it UAP now. So when, so I love to go to that stuff and listen in all three degrees. And this phenomenon had all of that. It had a Bigfoot, it had um, aliens and it had paranormal. And so I got to mix all three and I learned so much and it was amazing. So the first day I was there, I was at a Bigfoot panel with, I was at a panel, there was a panel Okay, Carrie. And they had the big the expedition Bigfoot people that were are researching Bigfoot and they Bigfoot and they have and you can see it on Discovery or Max. And they have been like looking for Bigfoot the last four seasons. And it's kind of amazing. I'd never had watched this show before, even though you all know those of you that follow me that my husband has had two the two sign to whatever two visits or not not visits but he has seen bigfoot twice and so i was interested and i went to this panel and it was amazing it was they talked about how um they the different things that they did while they were filming and the thing that i loved about it is this there one of the ladies on the panel she is a scientist her name is myra mayer it's 
I don't know if I said it right, but it's um, Maria Mayer. And she is a scientist and she studied with Jane Goodall, Goodall and um, the gorillas. And she, I love her because she's she likes to put the science. She wants the DNA. She wants the legit science. She wants the evidence. That's like, just like, I like evidence when I'm doing readings, evidential medium. So she um, has a book called Pink Boots and a Machete. And it says, my journey from NFL cheerleader to National Geographic Explorer. And she is on the panel and she is on the expedition research team. And she is amazing. And she talks about the DNA. She talks about the studies, um, the experiments that they do. And she's all about finding the evidence, which I love. And then the other person that was on this panel was named Ronnie LeBlanc. And he has, he has had encounters with UFOs, Bigfoot and Orange Orb. So I've read, he, I'm starting to read his book also. It's called Monsterland by Ronnie, Le, Ronnie LeBlanc. So those are, those were amazing. That panel was amazing. And there was also a, another guy named Russ on the panel and his cameraman that were really funny. And I didn't actually, I wasn't actually able to pick up his book, but he is a military scout and he knows how to find and research. And he's pretty, it was a pretty um, awesome panel. They kind of explained how much fun they had, but at the same time, how serious they took this. Now they're really willing to like try and find this Bigfoot and research it out. So that was mostly that day. They did have another speaker that talked a little bit the, about the paranormal and how it started. And they talked about the Fox sisters being mediums, the first mediums and how spiritualism came into effect. They did, he did talk a lot about um, Houdini and how he was trying to debunk mediums for so long, which I felt was kind of interesting. And um, he also kind of taught that there's a difference between being skeptic and cr critical or cynic. Yes, it's okay to be skeptic and ask questions about this stuff because that's what you're supposed to be. But to be a cynic about it or, or cynical about it is when you're not open to things at all and you just, it's your way or the highway. And so I really loved that too, because sometimes I am um, skepticism would stress me out a little bit because I would take it personal, but I don't anymore because it's, it's what I do and it's, it's awesome. So the next day we talked about is the Skinwalkers, the Skinwalker Ranch panel came and they were awesome. They were talking about how they know. Um, they just kept saying, you have to watch the fifth season, which obviously, you know, that's their their plug for their next season. But um, Travis, he is the scientific, the scientific one behind the whole team. And he says that he, when you know, he first started on Skinwalker Ranch, he felt like it was going to be Scooby-Doo episode where they kind of just found at the end, they were like, oh, it's Mr. McCormick down the street. And he said that he knows for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, with all of his, all of his intention or all of his intuition, that they are actually communicating with something. He doesn't know quite what it is, but he knows it's some sort of artificial intelligence or some sort of intelligent intelligence. And he also talked about the the UAP convention, not convention, but the stuff that's going on in the Senate and how people should be more aware of that because there, the government has come out and said there are UAPs. There are things out there that fly in the sky that we don't know what they are. And I've always kind of said that. And it was interesting because some of the people on the Skinwalker Ranch panel and some of the people, um, I think it was Ronnie, he kind of believes that they're all combined too. Somehow this is all combined. They all kind of have the same frequency or the same state or the same vibe that they give off or the same radiation that they give off or the same readings that they give off. And so I just know that they're somehow all combined and I just wanted to figure that out. So, and yes, I bought lots of stuff too, but my favorite was, was lunch with Dave Schrader. He, if you guys follow me at all I listen to all of his podcasts even the funny ones where they have a drink for there's he's got a couple he's well he's got the paranormal 60 which uh, is my favorite and he has also been on the Holzer Files with Cindy Keza and he's also been on um the Devil's Perch something and that was filmed in Butte Montana I don't I did say 
the title of that correctly. Um, something about the devil's perch or something, but, and he also, um, has a podcast paranormal 60, which I love. And he does interviews with other mediums, other people with books, um, other podcast people, anything that has to do with paranormal. And so I love that. And he also does, um, a new segment where him and his friends get together and they read a bunch of paranormal news. And every time they miss up a word, they have to take a drink. And by the time the fair that the podcast has ended there, it's pretty funny. So I listen to that because it's funny and it brings in fun to something that can be scary or something that can, and or that can scare some people. And that's why I love it because it brings in the fun. I'm all about being positive and fun and upbeat. And I want my readings to be that way. I want my knowledge to be that way. And I want my studies to be that way. But I do admit there are some things in this, in this career that aren't always going to be like that. And I want to be ready for it. So more the luncheon, there was only 10 of us, about 10 of us in there. It was very kind of an intimate setting. And I could just listen to him talk forever. He talked about his, some of his, most of the people there at the lunch wanted to talk about the Holter files and the devil perch one and, and Cindy Keza. And that was awesome. I, mostly wanted to, he's so knowledgeable in paranormal that I wanted to know, you know, some of his knowledge. I wanted to hear his stories. I could just listen to him talk all day about his experiences and the things that he has gone through. And because he has had some of his own experiences, paranormal and Bigfoot and um, all of his own experiences. My favorite story actually of his is when he had sat down to talk with God. And he, he was having a hard time in his life and he bought a hot dog and some old man sat the neck, um, across from him and was talking to him about his life and things. And then he went to go do something, throw something away. And he came back, the old man was gone and he calls that hot dogs with God. So he has a very soft heart. He's very kind hearted that I know of. I don't know him personally. I just had the lunch with him. So, but it was amazing. It was so much knowledge. And I will say too, I should have gone out. There's so much sky stuff or sky activity in Vernal, Utah. And I didn't go, I was so exhausted at, at the end of each day and I was alone. So I didn't go out and look at the sky each night. And I should have, because I guess there was lots of stuff going on because this place was right by Skinwalker Ranch, like 15 or 20 minutes away from it. And so I guess there's a lot of stuff going on at night in the skies and I didn't go watch it, but I did have a weird experience happening on the first night I got there in my hotel room. I did not take any sage with me. I didn't take any protective stuff because I was in a hurry to go or get there. And I was well, I get when I'm by myself, you know, I'm always nervous anyways. Right. So I was just kind of like laying in bed, getting ready to go to sleep. And all of a sudden, um, I always have this sound machine on my phone that I play and it turned off and I felt a presence on the bed and I looked up and there was this, it was like a outline of a person but if you guys have ever watched Predator, it, it didn't look like the Predator, but you know how when the Predator would cloak itself with an invisible kind of cloak and you would kind of see, I kind of saw that. And it kind of startled me at first, but then I was like, you're not welcome here because I've been used to stuff like this. So, um, and then it left, it went out the window. And so the next day I was looking for like Sage at the conference, <laughs> all that stuff because because it was kind of crazy. There was something sitting on the bed that turned off the sound machine on my phone, which was nuts. So it was kind of, it was kind of a cool experience. It was, it was, um, just all as a whole, it's just, and, you know, let it be known too, that it's a perfect timing for something like that to happen when I'm at a paranormal conference, right? It's like, and I'm not saying, here's the thing though, people are gonna be like, well, of course you were inviting it. I wasn't inviting it. It just, it was there and it was already there. And I just have the senses to feel it, or I have the sensitivity to feel it or see it. So, because, you know, you don't invite stuff like that. If you do this work and you invite stuff like that, then it could, you know, then it could be a bad thing. But I 
Um, my intention is to help. My intention is to um, be positive. And my intention is to help these spirits or help whatever it is communicate and and find help or know what's going on because there's a reason why they're there and I want to help them figure it out. So my intention is to grow and to learn. And it's just like shadow work with your own self, right? If you are going through a spiritual awakening and it's not all positive and upbeat, you have to dig deep inside yourself and figure out your shiz before you can go and raise your frequency. And same with my career. It's I've got to go in and I've got to look at both of the, I've got to look at both sides of it. I've got to look, it's not always going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy. And I have to know that there is kind of a dark side to what I do. And I have to be able to know what I'm getting into. And I don't want to go into it blindly and just be like, surprised. And I know that so many mediums have such a different outlook on this. Like there's so many mediums that are like, there's nothing bad. There's no evil, nothing going to hurt you. And that's great if that's what they've experienced. But like I have experienced different things and Cindy Keza has experienced different things and lots of other mediums have experienced different things. So the great thing that I love about paranormal is it's not just a box. It's not a box that everything fits nicely into. It's not like a science class. It's not like your English courses. This is a box that it nobody really knows the answer, right? Nobody does. So I can't even give you a 100% answer of what's correct or what's not, because what I've experienced is different from what other mediums have experienced. So my thing is, is that's why I want to learn because I want to figure it out. I want to know, I want to know all the things and I want to know how it works. And I know, I want to know how to help people because at the end of the day, I want to help people, but it's not paranormal. If you ask people, well, why does this happen? Or why does this happen? Um, let's just face it. Nobody knows. This is part of existence or part of our world that nobody knows why these things are happening and people can try and give you their side of or their opinions but at the end of the day nobody really knows so you take what you hear from other people and you take your experiences and you dig deep and you make your own decisions and that's how this works so I know this probably is a very long, but it's because I am trying to figure out this whole sound thing, because as I'm talking to you, I can hear my sound bowls in the background singing or, or making noise. And so I got to figure out those, if the sound, I got to figure out the sound, I got to figure out the camera. So we'll see how long this video thing works and if you really like it. So, but I'm so grateful that you were here to listen to this journey. And next week we are going to talk about time slips or, um, yeah, time slips and different women and different women. Well, there's, I want to share a book too that I'm reading about different women and paranormal. And so I'll kind of share that next week, but we're going to talk mostly about the time slips that happen when people go to go into a vortex or they go into a time portal or a time thing and they end up being at a different time. So I'm going to kind of share some stories about that and how that works. So if you are going through an awakening or you are going through something and you kind of don't know how to manage through it, I do have a course on my website at carriemergs.com that does help you with your awakening. It talks about the chakras. It talks about your guides. It helps you find your guides. It helps you balance your chakras. It helps you with your protection. So you're always protected. It helps you with meditation. It helps you with learning what signs and symbols you need to see. And it's an awesome beginner's course. If you're already going through your awakening and you know all about the clairs and things like that, then this course is not for you. But if you don't know about this stuff and you're brand new, this course would be perfect for you to learn all the things that are with your awakening. And each week in your mailbox, you'll get a different class. So that is on my website. Okay. So I hope this works out for you guys. I hope this works out for me and I love you so much. And if you ever have a chance to go to a phenomenon or a convention or a class of some sort to always, and just know too, no matter what class you take, you're never above it. You're never above learning. And if you're like, oh, I've already heard this. Well, there must be something else that you're learning. Right. And so just know that when you take a class, be open to all of it and know that there's a reason you're taking it. And 
and that people put a lot of thought into that for you. So I just love you guys so much. And I just want you to remember as always that the magic is in you. So I'll see you guys next week.